welcome to another episode of Chat Zion, the city of cities when it comes to YouTube chat shows. How are we going, Josepha? Oh, I'm good today. Love, love to be here again. Yeah, we're um, we're going to look today about Christianity versus Christianity, and and talking about the differences in whether or not you are being an active Christian or or a passive Christian, someone who is following Christ, that's what a Christian should be, that's what a Christian is, by definition, versus someone who's ticking a box on a form. You know? And for me, I grew up in a Catholic family, Catholic church, Catholic school, and so for all of my life, I identified with, with myself and with other people as, as a Christian person, because I was Catholic, baptised Catholic, Catholic school, Catholic everything, you know, um, believed in Christ the whole time. But was I really living a Christian life? And no, no, I wasn't. You know, and it's only taken until the last twelve months, less than twelve months, for me to understand the differences, yeah. or to maybe not understand, but appreciate the differences. I think. Yeah, it's it's like I think most most people would. Um, Think if you're a Christian, oh, you, you talk to the, the random person and, and and some of the people they say, oh, I'm a Christian, but I think Christianity came out of it was a term of endearment to Christians back uh, where the church started as people who followed Christ, people yeah. who did the same thing as Jesus did, and sometimes we can we can limit ourselves from saying, oh, I'm a Christian because I go to church every Sunday. Yeah without being a practicing Christian because I believe that Christianity is something you experience in Christ working through you first and Christianity is more than the four corners of the church when yeah. you step out that's when Christianity starts when you are in public with people when you know when, when you and you're driving on the road and the guy cuts you off that's where Christianity has to be displayed yeah and, and it's it's so different you know, for me, you know, you talked about coming coming to church every every week or as people identifying as, as a Christian because they rock up on a Sunday morning. And I used to go to church sometimes, occasional, you know. And then it got to the point where I would go to church for Easter, for Christmas, for someone's wedding. And that's about it. It's about as far as I got. Um... All at the same time, confessing to people openly that I did believe in God and in Jesus, and doing nothing that backed up what I was saying. You know, there's one thing is to walk around and go, "Yeah, this is this." What I say, yeah, it's right. Um, it's true. I believe it. But how is anyone supposed to actually believe that yeah. if all you're doing is telling them stuff? You know seeing is believing to a certain extent for a lot of people yeah. and if we expect people to to believe the same thing that we believe if we expect people to see us as something that they want to be see our lives as something that they want for themselves yeah. then we need to do something yeah. you know that's that active the, yeah. christianity and, part you know and like, like you said see i grew up in a family i went to church all my life i went to church from the day i was like from when I was born, I went to church. Apart from the the times where I was sick or or, or something like that, and um, you know, I went to church, but I wasn't an active Christian. You know, I I went to church because I saw my dad go to church. You know, my mom they brought us in church. They brought us. They go to church. You know, serve God. You know, I've listened to so much messages within the twenty nine years of my life. Been to church every single time, but I didn't have. I didn't live the Christian life, you know. I didn't have an experience with God. So so God was something that was taught to me, something that I heard of and something I see in the Bible, but something I didn't experience in my own life. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's experiencing yeah. that joy, yeah. you know. As, as a Christian, you know, we can take time to sit there and go, we had God manifest himself in man in Jesus Christ and come to earth yeah. and sacrifice himself yeah. for our lives 
for the betterment of, of our lives and our world. He didn't do that so that life could be miserable and boring. Yeah. You know, our, our lives are supposed to be filled with joy and filled with love. And as, as someone who's a Christian, as someone who is following Christ, you know, disciple of what Christ has shown us to do and told us to do, why would we live in such a way that doesn't embrace that joy and that, and that love? Yeah. You know, and that was something that was so, and I, I can't even believe it now, yeah. but, you know, the first time that I went to a, a Pentecostal church a few years ago, with an understanding of church from a Catholic point of view that I grew up with, you know, and I went to this, I didn't know what the difference was. I was like, oh yeah, you believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, you've got God, God, yeah, okay, same thing, we're going to church, it's still a church, right? And I went into this service, and it was, you know, the first one of, of a new year for this, um, uh, this Pentecostal church in Hobart where I was from, and I was there with, with my um, wife, my girlfriend at the time, and I walked in and I had absolutely no idea what was going on. There was people singing, people were happy, there was colourful bannery things all around the room, people came walking up to me when I walked in the door and said hello and happy new year and merry Christmas and shook my hands. And I'm like, yeah, hi, happy new year. I've got no idea who you are, random person. <laughs> hi, welcome. I'm feeling happy about myself now because everything's just so crazy. And, you know, these were people who were living in that joy and that love that Christ died for, for us to have. And, you know, Catholicism has its, has its benefits, as, as lots of things do. But... It was just, I've always got sucked into that, that reverence of it, that slowness and seriousness of, of focusing on all the things that God had done to make our life better, but how we weren't living up to the expectations of it. It was always what I sort of took from it. It's always like, oh, you know, we're not, we're not living up to the standard that we're supposed to be. And, you know, we're sitting there and going over all of this stuff about not living up to the standard and not doing this and not doing this. And then, you know, I walk into this other other church 10 years later, 15 years later, and instead of talking about not living up to the standard, here's a bunch of people who are just doing it. Yeah. You know, they're just living up to the standard yeah. instead of worrying about, oh, no, we're not doing it. Yeah. Instead of focusing on not doing it, they just went and did it, you know. <laughs> I went, oh, right. <laughs> this makes this logical here. Yeah. This makes sense. This is what we believe. This is what we want to do. Why aren't we just doing it? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I totally agree, you know, um, like I mentioned, like, like going to church all my life, you know, knew every, like the scriptures, I heard it every Sunday youth group, you know, Sunday school, you know, and, but I wasn't serious about it because it was something I knew, I didn't have an experience with it until my teenage years, that is when, you know, things were going haywire in my life, and the only thing that was in me that I knew was, you know, when everybody's, when you're, you know, you're, when you're backed into the wall and everything around you is not there. The only thing I knew was days ago. And that is when the experience, I experienced Jesus in a new way. Something yeah. happened to me that year that changed the whole way I looked at life. I looked at life from an eternal perspective. And, you know, out of that experience, you know, stuff happening around my life that was not good. But out of that experience, I, I, I found what I was looking for. I found Jesus in a new way. So everything that I learned before that was something I knew out of knowledge without an experience. But when I experienced it, everything just got confirmed. And yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And, and like, you know, and now I can't... Like, I can tell people about God, but I can also tell them that I have experienced God. See, when you have that experience backed up with what you know, it is something. So when you tell people there's just something bigger you're giving them because you've actually experienced it. It's like if you tell me, the, you know, I can tell someone, hey, I know about Paris, it's good, but never been there. Yeah, you know, it's like you, oh, got, you got to have that, that proof to, that back, proof it to back it up, you know, and, and for me, I realize that now I can not only tell people, hey, about Jesus, but tell them about the experiences that I've been through, that, that it supports. Yeah, and, and having those experiences support 
all the things that you can say about all the stuff that God can do for you. Yeah. You know, and even for me, after that point where my eyes were, you know, reopened yeah. to to the possibilities that can come from from discipleship with Jesus, from following in yeah. his teachings. Years after that, you know, I went to um, to a a healing meeting with um, a guy called John Meller, who's awesome. Any of our subscribers haven't seen him? Check him out, John Meller. And I was um, going to that to to get prayer yeah. for myself, to get some healing for myself. Um, you know, and he's a guy who's renowned for for miraculous works of healing for people, physical pain and, and mental and emotional stresses. And I went once and went up to, at the front at the end of the meeting and didn't get a chance to, to meet John or to get prayed for by John. And I was prayed for by one of the other guys who was up the front, you know, uh, working with people and, and got prayer for my back. I'd had massive problems with my back for years and years and years and felt a little bit better about myself for a little while and then after a couple of weeks, didn't really notice it, you know. I was back to feeling the same as I felt before. And then, you know, it was another year later, or 18 months later, I, I went back again. And this is, uh, this is after being in the church for a little bit longer, you know, figuring it all out a little bit more than what I had before. And so I, I went back again the next time he came, came to town. And I was like, right, I'm, I believe that this guy yeah. can have Christ work through him yeah. and that he can yeah. heal the pain and eliminate the suffering that I've been going through. And I went there with like, I'm getting that. Yeah. And I had that mindset of it's gonna happen. You know, and I sat front row, or second row from the front, right there, and when people were getting called up at the end to call up and get prayer and get healing, I went straight to the front, straight to the middle, right in front of where of where John Miller was. And I waited for him so that I could get prayer. Yeah. And you know, people were getting prayed for left, right, center, and then eventually he came and he prayed for me, and he said, "You know, hi, how are you? What are you doing?" And you know, just sort of spent a couple of seconds getting to know me and, and what I was there for. And I talked to him about my my back and the problems that I had and things like that. And he started to pray for me, and you know, I could feel myself yeah. resisting yeah. what it was that he was trying to do. Yeah. Like I didn't actually believe it myself yeah. what he was doing for me. Um, you know, and I'd seen all these people around me all falling over when they were getting prayer and doing all this stuff. And, and I was sort of, you know, nah, do I believe that these people are falling over? Do I know what's going on? Um, and as he's praying for me, I can feel my legs getting a bit loose. They're starting to go. I can feel them wanting to give way under me. And me, you know, I've grown up and spent 20 years of my life playing sport and running around and learning not to fall over. You know, that's not what you want to do. You've got to stay at, stand your feet, stand your ground. And so I'm, I'm resisting him and I'm holding and I'm keeping my feet. I'm standing up straight and he's going and he's going. And, you know, he's telling me just to, to give in to the power, yeah. to give in to let myself go. Yeah. And eventually, you know, my body's trying to resist and my brain and my, my soul, my spirit is just going, let, let it happen. Just, yeah. just forget about it and just let whatever is going to happen, happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay, right, stop, you know, just let it go. And the second that I made that decision just to trust in whatever was happening to me at that stage, yeah. as soon as that happened, my legs went and I started to fall down. Yeah. And I was face plant, or yeah. landed back first, you know, banging my head on the ground behind me. You know, I'm six foot three, it's, it's a big way to fall down, big boy to go. And, and I went down and, you know, I didn't feel banging on this you know, concrete floor at all, you know. I didn't feel anything at all. And it was from that, even before I went down, from that moment yeah. that I let go of it, that I stopped fighting against it, yeah. I couldn't feel anything, my back at all. And I hadn't for 10 years yeah. been able to not feel anything in my back, yeah. you know. And it's nine months later now, no, was it six months later now? Yeah. And I still haven't had anything where it's come up. Yeah. 
you know, I believe that I was healed and I believe that I was healed because I allowed myself yeah. to yes. be healed. And as someone who wasn't actively Christian, as someone who didn't actually think and do and say the things that I said or what we should do, yeah. that would never have happened for me. Yeah. If I was just going around telling people how good God was, yeah. but not believing it myself, not yeah. doing it myself, yeah. I would never have had that. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, that's what it's about. Yeah, you know? that's, what that's what being a Christian, Christian is yeah. about. It's about following in Jesus and trusting in the things that he told us to do. You know? And you read through the, all these stories in the Bible of people wanting to be healed and Jesus healing them. And they let him do what he could do. Yeah. And that was the difference for me. And, and that's what I think it is now. It's about being able to actively follow what he taught us to he do. he taught us to do. That's it. And trusting God and trusting that... He's going to work through it. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to do what needs to be done to get you where you need to go. That's uh, all for us today here at Chat Zion. Subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more of what we've got to say. Chat Zion on YouTube. Send us a message. Send us an email. ChatZionMail at gmail.com if you've got anything you want us to cover in future topics or if you've got any questions about anything we've said today. Always happy to hear from our Thousands of fans that I know you're going to be. Yep. We'll see you next week.